How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a minute. You may have seen recently I put out a Unreal Engine 5 cinematic based on the Arkhamverse Batman. And um, if you follow gaming and you know about what happened with the latest Rocksteady game, um, yeah, I felt compelled to kind of do a bit of justice um, to the Arkhamverse, the, the original Arkham games that I, I love so much. I've put hundreds and hundreds of hours into them and in developing my skills this year, looking at Unreal Engine, remembering that the Arkham games were built in Unreal Engine, I felt like I wanted to really learn that skill set this year. So this video today is going to be breaking down my process of how I made the video you saw a clip of at the start and uh, all the way from creating the initial template in Blender to transitioning over to Unreal Engine 5, learning about how to use Mixamo characters and all of that good stuff. Now this is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial video where I'm sort of breaking down exactly how I did stuff. This is literally showing you my process of how I did it, which involved a lot of errors, mistakes, figuring stuff out. Just so you can see the things that I learned, the things that I tried to do and didn't work and how I ended up getting there. I will be making specific tutorials on some of the things I did learn. If you want actual like how to do that, I will be making those sorts of videos. But for this long video, this is more just a sit down, watch my creative process, see how I got to the end result. A lot of the techniques I use are probably not the like right techniques, but the video I came out with at the end basically got across what I wanted it to be. And at the end of the day, that is all I set out to do. And in any creative endeavor, um, as long as you get the right result, it doesn't really matter how you get there. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned some things and hopefully I learned some things too. All right, let's check it out. So firstly, I opened up Blender and opened up Cargo from Kitbash 3D, which um, just want to say, Cargo, Kitbash 3D, if you want to become a sponsor at some point. I, I literally love everything you guys do and um, get a little sponsorship in there, please. Thank you. And what's really great about using Cargo is that you can literally scroll through all of these different settings, themes, and there's 3D models and materials for all these different settings that you could possibly need. So I went through, was having a look, and eventually ended up just having a look at the Arkham Knight aesthetic to get a vibe, because I was going for the Art Deco look. I wasn't quite sure, and I was like, maybe Manhattan. Uh, but eventually settled on the Brooklyn streets for something a bit more kind of concrete, something more like brick based, a bit more sort of uh, rustic, I guess, than the either like futuristic Manhattan or even the Art Deco stuff. For now, we're in Brooklyn and it's as simple as clicking on the 3D model, selecting Blender and clicking download. And here we are, boom, we have our model in Blender. So I just with a little time lapse here just showed you I imported a few different models in, scaled them up, moved them around and all the textures come with it straight into it. It's literally that easy and went into the city streets, brought in some more assets there to kind of decorate the scene. Uh, I think I went into the cyber streets as well at one point, uh, but it was so easy to just build the scene out very quickly, get all the assets in there. Um, I think this maybe took me like half an hour max to get the scene looking how I want it to do. Just chucked a volumetric fog in and some lights to get a feel of the vibe, like how the scene's gonna look with the lighting, because that's just as important as the actual layout. I brought in a model of the Batman Arkham City uh, character, which I uh, just downloaded somewhere off the internet. I can't remember exactly where. And so after all of that, I scrapped it. I was like, you know what? I know Blender. I know how to use Blender. Just doing this in Blender is not gonna really challenge me and allow me to learn anything new. And all I had to do is literally export the whole scene as a USD, which is as easy as going to file, export, USD, selecting everything, export. And then in Unreal Engine, you just open the USD stage editor, do import, load the USD stage in. And that basically just brings everything over and there we go, we have, we have the scene exactly as it laid out, except there were two buildings missing, which I couldn't quite work out why that wasn't working, but um, it, that was no problem. It was easy to just copy and paste two buildings in Unreal Engine, but that easy. Now I opened up the uh, fab library and brought in the ultra dynamic sky asset, which I have, which it, if you don't have and you're using Unreal Engine, just honestly, I would highly recommend it. It's really not that expensive and it just gives you, I mean, look at all these settings. It's ridiculous. Just how many settings you get to control literally everything you'd want to control um, about the weather and lighting for your scene. Tweaked or all the settings. I'm not going to bother showing you everything I tweaked, but basically wanted to go for this kind of hyper surreal look with this big moon and intense rain. And that was it. Now back in Blender, I had my model of Batman and I needed to rig him up. So for using that, I did uh, Mixamo 
Now I needed to separate the cape, so I selected the polygons of the cape and pressed P and separate by selection, which basically means everything you selected, it will separate into a separate mesh. Now I didn't actually select all of him. I probably should have selected around the neckline as well, the whole cape. I do go back to that and do that in a sec. In Mixmo, which is a free piece of software, which you can use on the internet. It's an Adobe software, but you don't need to pay for it. You just have to log in. Um, you can download animations for preset characters, but you can also upload your own character, rig it and add animations to it, which is excellent. So for this, I exported my Batman as an FBX file, uploaded him to Mixamo, and here we go. Just using these auto rig options with the chin, wrists, elbow, knee, and groin. It's as simple as just lining them up, pressing next, and bang, he is rigged and ready. Now, obviously the fingers here, we didn't match those up for anything, so he's not gonna have good control over those, but for, <laughs> for this video, we, we don't really need that. Now, I found this jumping down animation, which is what I wanted for him to jump off the building and land, and I will customize this a bit more in Blender, but for now, I just downloaded it at 24 FPS, because I'm gonna be rendering it as a film, so I don't need it more than that downloaded that, imported the FBX into Blender, and here we go, we have our Batman as we had him before, but with this animation, so that's pretty good. Now I just moved the keyframes around, sort of lengthened the animation a little bit so it wasn't as quick. That's looking pretty good, having him jump down, and then just through a bit of custom animation myself with some keyframes, just made him stand up slowly um, and menacingly at the end there, which is just what I wanted him to do. And that was just as simple as keyframing that in Blender. So that was a good example of just, I guess, mixing the mixing the Mixamo animation with uh, my own custom one. So yeah, just playing around with that, smoothing out the F curves just to get it looking nice and smooth. And there we go, we kind of got our animation pretty much in place. Now back on the cape, I went to the rest of the cape that was still attached to the Batman model, selected it, did P separate by selection, reconnected it to the cape so I had the entire cloth material as a separate thing. I then exported both of these things as separate FBX files to import into Unreal Engine. Now I made some errors in this import process. Um, I was selecting the wrong things and it was just not applying the right things properly. It's a whole thing, you've got to get it right. So um, there was a few stages of this, but anyway, I brought my Batman asset in and the biggest issue I had was I was adding the physics asset of it into the scene instead of the skeletal mesh and that was causing errors with the animation. So if you're looking at this and you're screaming, don't worry, I do figure that out later. Now with the cape, I imported that as well and opened that in the clothing data menu and basically weight painted everything I needed uh, for the cape to so that the top bit of the cape wasn't having physics, so that was kind of pinned, but the cape itself below would flap around and react with the physics of the Unreal Engine simulation. I was considering doing this in Blender initially and kind of baking the animation in, but A, it was just having too many <laughs> issues in Blender, and B, I didn't want to bake the animation in because I wanted the, the the simulation of him moving in the Unreal Engine world to affect him and the wind and all that to work separately from a pre-baked animation. So in the end, I scrapped the Blender baked in thing, just used the cloth simulation within Unreal Engine and that ended up working much better for me. So again, a bit of wasted time, but it was stuff that I, I learned. Next thing I needed was a car. So again, in Cargo, I just switched the target software to Unreal Engine 5.4, found this large SUV, and it was as simple as pressing download, import, and here we go. Uh, in the blueprint for the car, I just added some, a couple of spotlights, and some point lights to act as the headlights and rear brake lights for the car. And that was literally as easy as that. Dropped that into the scene, added a level sequence in, and now I could start actually keyframing elements of the scene. So I animated the car, added the camera in as well, and started keyframing some key points here. And this was just playing around with a sort of general feel of how the scene was gonna flow. So I wanted to start in the sky on the bat symbol, flow through, see the car, see some of the guys on the ground, up to Batman, back down, see him drop down, um, and then pull back to reveal the final guy. So this was just really tweaking all of these settings, all of the keyframes to get that looking exactly how I wanted it to. Now I felt the background behind him was really boring, so in this case I actually went into the Goliath building pack and downloaded some of these really cool, huge, gothic looking buildings, moved them into the background, and they really just gave that sense of scale instead of it just being the sky behind him you kind of got that yeah that's all the skyscrapers going off really gothic a bit different to the brooklyn street as well kind of give that sense of perspective and the difference in 
yeah, that was just working really nicely. It was framing the shot nicely, the moon behind him, um, and that was working good. So now I just needed some bad guys. So I went into Mixmo, just use their preset characters for this. I will do some more stuff with metahumans in the future, but for the sake of this, these default Mixmo characters and animations were fine. So downloaded these guys, imported their FBX files, straight into Unreal Engine. I was doing the same thing here where I was importing them and everything was fine, but I was using the physics asset instead of the skeletal mesh. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, it was a bad move, okay? It was, this was causing me, this was hours of frustration. I figured it out. Anyway, we have our guy and a couple of things I needed to learn here were how to actually add the animation in, which I found was as easy as pressing the plus and using that default animation we've added in, positioning that in the sequence where I wanted it to happen. I was running into errors of, okay, but it ends, but how do I get him to hold in the final frame? Also, how do I get him to hold in the first frame before he starts? These are things I worked out in a bit. Anyway, brought in a few different guys, put them in, positioned them where I wanted them to be, and now we're actually building out our scene and it's looking good. The buildings behind Batman were very dark, so I just put some point lights in there in front of the windows. I didn't go into too much of texturing the inside of the windows with rooms, that would have taken too long. They're in the distance, they're out of focus, so just the point lights are fine enough for this situation. Now for this final bit with the guy at the end, I just moved Batman in a single keyframe so after he landed and the camera's panning, he actually just one keyframe teleports over there and plays the same animation again. Again, it was just a quick workaround. I didn't want to spend too much more time on it. And he still did the same thing. He kind of rises up. There's no point doing that again. So I just replayed that behind the guy. So that was looking good. Batman dropping down was looking nice. The spotlight on him was looking good. I now needed our guys to run away. So I went back into Mixamo, got a few different running away animations, re-imported the characters again as a separate FBX file um, and basically as the camera pans up and moves away, those original people, just one keyframe, moves them off screen, out of the scene, and then these new guys come in as a separate animation. Uh, there probably is a way to add that animation to the original characters so they don't have to duplicate them all, um, but I didn't work that out here. Now, problem I was having was the, when I was rendering stuff out to test, none of the characters were actually showing up. And this was the physics asset problem where the physics asset was just not working. So after realizing it was the skeletal mesh I had to do, I had to basically re-import everything again, re-import all the characters again as the skeletal mesh, do all the same keyframings, but it was all right. It only added like maybe an extra half an hour, still a bit annoying, but um, I was then having problems with the first frame of the character not starting right. As you see, Batman was doing some funky things. I then figured out it was literally as simple as clicking this advanced tab, which only had the pre-roll and post-roll frames. I don't know why it didn't just have those on there. And just adding more frames to the start so that the animation just holds on that first frame before it actually starts playing. It was as easy as that. This took me ages to figure out. Um, so I just went and did that to every single character. So now I have the characters rendering and they're holding in their final frame. For the bat symbol, I just took this image of Google, um, gave it an alpha channel, blurred the edges and just made a very basic material in Unreal Engine, just dropped the texture on and positioned it on a plane just moved it into space around this volumetric fog that I put up in the sky and put a point light in there to illuminate it. Simple as that. Now I wanted the final guy to have two animations. I wanted him to walk forward, stop, and then start moving his hands around. It's something I've not really experimented with before. So in Blender, I thought maybe it's just as easy as copying, pasting the keyframes from one armature onto the other. That ended up creating this absolute monstrosity. So that did not work at all. But I then realized that what I had to do was basically use the uh, non-linear uh, animation editor which allows you to combine two different animation sets together by just adding them in morph them together dissolve them together so i found a new model for this final guy imported him in imported the just the armature without the model and added these two animations in there cross dissolved them together and it was as simple as that exported that as an fbx animation brought that into unreal engine again and we had everything then at that point we had our batman animation working the cape working the scene was looking good all of our bad guys were in there the animations were working the lighting was looking nice the scene was looking good oh, finally we were there now onto the stuff i actually knew about which was making it look good so i exported this as a png sequence from unreal engine imported this into after effects and this is where we get creative with the uh, actually making it look look look, look sexy I did the basic things here of a little bit of color grading on an adjustment layer. First of all, added a glow and a vignette to uh, just sort of 
boost the highlights, give it that sort of ethereal look. I was going for the Batman 2022 look, so I really wanted that kind of hyper focus on certain elements. Another really good trick that I use is adding a radial blur to give it that kind of smudged look on the edge. It's not the real way they do it in the film, but for the sake of this, it's good enough. So radial blur, just masking out around the edges. Um, added two color mats on the top and bottom just so the effect wasn't going on the default color mat that had been baked into the Unreal export. A um, little bit of color grading on there. I was using the final frame of the Penguin TV show, minor spoilers if you haven't seen it. It's literally just the final frame as a color grade reference. So I was looking at that going back and forth until I was happy with how that looked. Lastly, I just tracked an adjustment layer to the bat symbol because that itself wasn't glowing as much as I wanted it to. So I just masked an adjustment layer around the tracked bat symbol, gave it a bit more of a glow and a boost. Here's the final set of layers that I've got. You can see there, a little bit of chromatic aberration as well around the very edges, just to kind of give it that dirtier look that the Batman has. Now I had to export this and ironically, although the Unreal Engine render only took like two minutes, the After Effects render took an hour and a half, so. But uh, if I'd done that in Blender using Cycles, I would have been there for days waiting for that to render. So, you know, Unreal Engine really showing its power there. Lastly, in Premiere, I used my subscription to Soundstripe. Soundstripe, if you're up for sponsoring the video, check me out. I'd love to sponsor you guys. I use Soundstripe in pretty much every project I do for sound effects and music. So um, they're really good. I'd highly recommend um, checking them out. And for this, it was as easy as using their extension in Premiere and just bringing in all the sound effects and music bits and music cues that I wanted, laying them all up. And there we go. We have our, our final video, which I will show you in a second. That's my process of how I made this Batman Arkham-esque uh, Unreal Engine render. As I say, it was very messy. It was not a one-to-one -one exactly how you should do it. This was me learning it, and I'm gonna be giving myself more projects in the future to learn as much as I can. Thank you, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, um, and do subscribe for more content like this. I'm gonna be really getting more content out this year back on this channel. I know I've been quiet for a few years, but um, I'm back. So yeah, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.